All right, hello and welcome to The Secret Knowledge. My name is Shane. I'm without uh, my typical cohort today, Allison, uh, but I have someone else to talk to, uh, Justin, otherwise known as Just Johnson or otherwise known as uh, Bigfoot Cyber Arc. Uh, what's up, man? How's it going? Pretty good, pretty good. Appreciate you having me on and uh, talking to me. <clears throat> well, I'll uh, cut right to the good stuff. Um, you and I first became acquainted through a video that you shot um, and that I ended up seeing of a UAP, or how would you describe it, in uh, Springfield, Missouri? Um, unidentified, for sure. Um, uh, as of today, we still haven't really got any conclusive evidence on what it was or anybody coming forward with what they knew about it move on and close the case on it as a unidentified flying object. Well, before we get um, too ahead of ourselves, I know you've retold the story before, uh, but take me back to that day. Uh, walk me through the entire thing. Yeah, so I just got off work. I'm an electrician. I was doing a job at the mall and uh, it was about five o'clock or so. I was heading north on Glenstone Avenue and uh, I got to about like Sunshine Street and I started noticing something kind of shiny off um, to the distance to my north east. And uh, as I kept um, driving, <clears throat> this thing was kind of coming at me and kind of going catty corner across my line of vision. It was getting closer. And at first I thought it was like maybe a balloon or something just kind of flickering in the air that got away from somebody. And uh, as I got close and well, I thought it might be a helicopter because at the height it was flying. <clears throat> and the speed it was flying, it uh, it kind of matched that. So I just thought it was one of our local like hospital helicopters coming in for a landing or whatever. And uh, as I got closer to it, I noticed it was really kind of odd shaped and it was like flipping. I was like, well, that's not a helicopter. <laughs> and as I got like right up underneath this thing, like I could see that it looked like to me with the naked eye, like a solid metal cube. I'd say it was probably about the size of a car and uh -huh. it was like flipping like a 20 sided dice, like a disco ball or something, just spinning in the air. And uh, that's when I was like, Oh my God, I got to stop. And it was like rush hour traffic. I was in my work van. I whipped into the middle lane and uh, I got my phone out and I looked like a crazy guy just hanging out the window recording this thing. And like cars were blowing by me, <laughs> like semi freaking blew right by me. I was like, it's oh very brave of you. You're doing good work in the, in the field of UAP journalism. So I've always been a fan of this subject, just like kind of casual. I kind of got some friends into it, watching some of the different YouTubers talk about this kind of stuff, but never in my <laughs> wildest dreams would I thought I would have saw something like this personally. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. But when I saw this thing, it definitely kind of woke me up a little bit. And I was like, I got to start looking into this stuff more. <laughs> and not to mention like when I did, well, I'll go back to my encounter, not to get ahead of myself. Um, so I whipped into the middle lane, I was recording this thing and I got about a minute of it and, uh, it was kind of moving West and it was kind of going out of my line of sight. So I was like, well, I'm about to lose this thing and cars were blowing by me. I was in my work van and everything. I was like, I'm not going to impede traffic for any longer. I was like, I got a good video. This is better. I knew I was like, this is better than most stuff I see online. So people should like this. Um, a lot of people still complain. <laughs> it's like why didn't you get more video and i was like wow oh, man if i wouldn't have been if i was in my personal vehicle maybe yeah i would have let's go i would have chased it well look, for anyone who doesn't know um so you filmed this on glenstone avenue and i'm also from springfield and i'm just gonna tell anyone out there who, who thinks he should have filmed longer or anything glenstone can be a madhouse at certain times of day like it oh is a God. popular road it's it's used to get to a lot of different places and like i'm surprised you filmed as long as you did I, I'm surprised that the background rush. chaos isn't isn't louder. Honestly, I just yeah, I threw the phone up, zoomed in, found it, tried to hold it. I felt like I did a pretty good job. You know, I was tired from work and stuff, but I thought I did a pretty good job of keeping it relatively steady. Yeah, and then I kind of put the phone away. I was like, I'm not gonna impede traffic any longer, and I kind of proceeded home. And I watched it with my eyes, and it flew out towards the Springfield Airport. So when I first saw it, it was kind of flying southwest, and then it kind of changed direction and went northwest. This thing basically flew like at, like straight at like Hammond's Tower almost, you know what I mean? Wow. From like over by the Cooper Tennis Complex, Springfield Small Regional Airport or whatever. Yeah, I, I remember. Um, so I, once I found your video, I sort of 
um, read the Reddit thread of the discussion that had happened there. I read YouTube comments on your, your video to see what the discussion was. Um, and probably the main point of skepticism that I encountered was people likening it to a mylar balloon, which would be cubic in shape and have a reflective surface. Um, what is your response to uh, that claim? So I've heard all kinds of theories and stuff and there's been a lot of skeptics, oh my God. Mm -hmm. But uh, from all the different researchers I've, I've had per contact me, like the MUFONs looked into this, um, I've had a private investigator here locally that took an interest into it. He kind of contacted me when he found it on one of the pages I released it on. And then uh, I had some other people uh, through like Twitter and stuff as I got more active in these communities that looked into it. Uh -huh. And they all found that the wind was blowing northeast, I believe is what they found. Most of them found. And uh, when I first saw this thing, it flew southwest for like right. the first minute. I saw all in all my own personal encounter with this thing, I would say it was about three minutes long. Mm -hmm. I saw it for about a minute before I stopped. I saw it for a minute, you know, while I videotaped it. And then I probably got another about minute of it before I lost sight of it out by the airport. And that would mean that it kind of flew against the wind, you know? Right. And also some of the other things I've heard in support of it is some people say, well, it's spinning like way faster than it's moving. It's moving very slowly through the sky, but this thing is like just spinning like crazy. You know what I mean? And that's not behavior typical of the wind. Also, things in the wind seem to like kind of just how they jitter around. You can kind of tell. Mm -hmm. And when I saw this thing with my eye, I couldn't really see that jittering. I knew I saw that it was like spinning and just flying in straight lines uh -huh. is what it seemed like. So it just doesn't behave like a balloon to me. That's sort of a, another thing I was going to ask you, because um, I've watched the video probably 20 or 30 times, I think. Um, is there anything about the video that you don't think captures the experience versus what you really witnessed looking at it from, from the ground? I mean, I don't want to like brag and be like, oh, I got the best video ever or anything like right. that, because I know I could honestly use some work and a better camera. But like, I no, I mean, uh, the video, when I look at the video, like I relive the experience, like it, it, I think I got a pretty good depiction of it. I mean, obviously in person, to me, I could tell visually that it looked like a solid metal cube, like the sides were rigid, they were smooth, and this thing was spinning really fast, you know what I mean? So you can, to, some people can get that from the video. I've heard others say they really can't, they can't tell what it is, it's not clear enough, whatever, you're not going to make some people happy. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I read um, someone had analyzed or stabilized your 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 footage. I thought I had read somewhere. So when I first dropped this thing on Reddit, um, there's a few bots on there, and people got those to kind of stabilize it, and they did an all right job. But with the edges moving so much, it's still really hard to focus on the object. But uh, like a couple YouTubers, um, prominent YouTubers, they got a hold of my video and they like to analyze these things. They slow them down, track them and stuff like that. And uh, Tyler with Secure Team and uh, Mr. MBB333, um, they both did analysis on it and MUFON did the same thing and they and, uh, with their analysts. Uh -huh. And they all found kind of the same thing is that when you slow this thing down, it's kind of like jittering really fast, like back and forth and it kind of splits into like two or three objects at some times. Wow. And some people would be like, okay, that's kind of like camera anomalies. But when you look at it, like when it splits into the objects, it doesn't really do it in a straight line, like a moving object would, you know, say you're swerving your camera or whatever, leaving it. Uh, it kind of splits into multiple directions at the same time. And at times it's actually kind of changing shape. And I couldn't tell that with my naked eye, but when they slowed uh -huh. the camera down, it looks like the object is changing shapes at time. Um, when MUFON closed the case on it, like I consider it a cube and I still call it a cube because uh -huh. I've had a lot of other people seeing their, saying they're seeing the cubes as well, but they classified it as like a dodecahedron, like a dice or something. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Pretty weird. So a lot of the analysis for the video and the, the clip itself um revealed quite a bit i guess um i mean this video kind of sounds like it's been through the the ringer of of analysis i got lucky and a lot of people took interest in it like really quickly and i don't know that that obviously that's not normal for a lot of videos 
mm-hmm. but I guess I got lucky enough to get a clear enough picture of something right um that yeah a lot of kind of prominent people took it and ran with it and it's been featured on coast to coast um multiple really yeah coast to coast wrote an article and had it on there talking about it um several i guess kind of big magazines or news agencies out of the uk were like kind of the first ones to grab it like the mirror and uh, a couple other ones all in all it's probably like personally that i've been able to find on the internet and i've had people link to me to share to me it's probably gotten like 12 different news sites to kind of write about it and talk about it coast to coast is mind-blowing i can't believe i i know it's something they got on coast i actually have a coast to coast uh question for you actually a little bit later on really uh so that's really funny um and you also uh what sort of brought us or what was sort of a kind of a serendipitous thing a few days ago it was reported on again uh, yeah at was it a hundred point nine uh 101.9 or something like that the eagle yeah they uh we we talked about making this show and then somebody linked that to me the next day and i was like did he know about that because what's funny is like uh in the article when they were showing my video they're taking it from you guys i know that was so weird so i was like it's so random i know oh man i have no idea how that all how that all happened Hmm. um so before we before i ask you more about your personal thoughts on what this thing might have been i sort of wanted to circle back around is there anything else from the analysis um, that you want people to know Um, anything else that to you kind of substantiates this experience or this uh footage I, i don't know i mean it's just amazing like i can't People like to, there's all different kinds of theories. Oh my God, I've heard some wild ones, especially on Reddit. Yeah, that community is just hilarious. What was and, something you uh, heard on, on Reddit? Reddit was all over the place. There's people saying it's like the Borg, I think from Star Trek, uh, like the TARDIS. Um, uh, I've heard stuff from angels, like all kinds of people. People see whatever they want in this thing and it's pretty yeah. amazing. Because you know, when you see like a saucer or the triangle or, you know, the Tic Tac, everybody knows that's pretty synonymous with UFO sightings. But when you see a cube, you're just like, what, <laughs> what yeah. is that? Cause yeah. there's so many theories on what it can be. I mean, people take whatever they want from it. And it's kind of cool in that regard too, because it didn't really just appeal to like UFO people into this subject. Yeah. It kind of brought a, a spectrum of people with all right. kinds of interest. But personally, I, I, I don't know. Like, I've had a few theories on what it is. Obviously, it's, to me, it, when I got home, I was shaking with adrenaline, you know. <laughs> and I don't think a party balloon would have kind of, you know, instigated that response from me. I knew I looked at something crazy. I got home. I was shaking. I told my wife. I was like, oh, my God. I, I just caught a UFO or something. And I started calling everybody in my family. <laughs> but I also, I also started investigating this thing, like, as fast as I could. I knew I had to get it out there because it was something special that I managed to catch. And when I looked at the video, I was like, man, that's good enough. That's better than most of them. Yeah. So I threw it. Like, I, I was kind of – I wasn't big into social media. I was on Facebook, and I kind of had recently gotten into Reddit and stuff. But like, I didn't follow a lot of communities on there prior to this. Yeah. But I knew I was like, man, you got to get this out there as much as I could. And like, I emailed it to like all the local news stations, um, every like the weather people. Uh, I sent it to a couple radio stations. Um, I contacted the FAA and I was like, man, surely they want like a reporting of this or something, or maybe they'll know what it is. Yeah. And I called the local FAA and actually got in direct contact with our local flight tower. That's like amazing. When you, yeah, when you call Springfield Airport, like they'll put you right through to the flight tower. It's crazy. And I talked you to two anything people from them. I talked to two people there, and on a couple occasions, um, the first time they I called them, and I was like, "Gee, uh, I, something just flew across Springfield." And I was like, "Huh, that's weird." They're like, "We don't have anything on radar. Uh, there's nothing in the area, according to our flight records. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't know what it is." And these the, the guy, he's like. Uh, He's like, but my, out of my own curiosity, he's like, here's my email address. Will you send that to me? And I sent it to him. And uh, he's like, uh, it's a funny story about all this. He's like, actually, he's like, I used to be a flight, uh, flight control operator in uh, Area 51. I was like, no way. He's like, yeah. He's like, we used to get calls like this all the time. 
And he's like, we have a number on the wall there. When people call, because we just get so many, we would just send them to this number. He's like, I can't think of it. He's like, I'm going to try to find it. I'll get back in touch with you. Wow. And he's like, there's not a lot. He's like, I can help you. But he's like, you might try to call like our regional airport, like the main one up in like Kansas City. And he gave me the number for them. And I've called and left them messages. And I haven't really had anybody get back to me about this thing. Huh. Um, but like about a month went by because he's like, well, keep us posted. And I was like, okay. And about a month went by and they called me and this time it was the a lady. Okay. And uh, she called and she's like, Hey, uh, have you found out anything about that? And I was like, no, I was like, I called you guys. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm not an expert in this. I don't know. What... So I was like, but seeing as how you're calling me, uh, must mean you guys are interested in it and you don't know what it was. And he's like, no, we don't know what it was. And uh, we're very interested in it. And I was like, Oh my God, that's amazing. And uh, she's like, in something else, she's like, my husband is actually the guy at our local airport that releases weather balloons twice a day. No and she's, way. Like, I, she's like, I took your video home and showed it to him. And he heard in the first thing he said, I was like, oh my God, that's not a balloon. He's like, that's really? not one of mine. Yeah. He's like, that's not a balloon. He's like, that's not one of mine. I was like, oh, wow. So inadvertently, I kind of got like another aspect of yeah. this just by talking to them. That's and amazing it, because yeah. I had I had read that you mentioned talking to that woman, mm. um, but you hadn't included that that part of at least in the in the in the comment thread that I read. Um, mm. I, I, oh, I've talked about it a couple of times, but yeah. They okay, pretty, sorry. They I must... get pretty dicey and lengthy, and people, yeah, all these skeptics and stuff coming. Wow, around. and and speaking of regional um, airports or whatever, other people saw a similar thing, right? Yeah. Well, wow. That's gotten, that's gotten pretty crazy. Okay. So since I've had this thing out, it's been out like three months or so now I saw it in October. Uh, I like every time this thing kind of gets posted somewhere, somebody reaches out to me and they're like, I've seen this. I've seen this I, at this point I've lost count. It's probably somewhere between 20 and 30 people have contacted me really? through different social media efforts like Reddit, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and they're like, hey, man, I saw this on such and such date. And one of the oldest ones I was able to find, and I've actually interviewed the guy on my channel. Um, he saw it three years ago in Tulsa, or a similar object, if not the same object. It was a cube. It was broad daylight. It flew over. Um, MUFON down there didn't have a lot of information on it. And uh, I guess they said because it kind of flew a with the wind, they classified his as a... Uh, well, like a balloon like a square mile long balloon or whatever uh -huh. but i've actually talked to the guy that investigated his stuff because mufon did like a recording session out of oklahoma down there and he kind of invited it invited me to it because he knew i was interested in that stuff and i actually asked him i was like well looking at mine now would you and he's like well he's like i just don't have enough information so i'd have to go with that but besides that like i've had that um i found out later a few weeks later that a guy the next day had saw the exact same object or similar object in Cleveland, Ohio. Right. And up there, the news got a hold of it, Fox 8 out of Cleveland, Ohio, and they ran a feature about it. Well, I kind of follow that guy on Twitter too. And he seems a little bit like a skeptic. And it seemed uh, the tone of the video they used, because they had this like, they had a uh, guy that worked at the local airport come on there and he was like, hey, he said, uh, He's like, uh, he's like, it was a drone. He's like, it looks like a drone to me. The other thing with that is like, I don't think it's the drone because if I've never like find it, find it, share it. I'll believe it. If you can prove it, right. you know, it's the show me state, show me and I'll believe you <laughs> how I, I went out and bought like a cheap for black Friday. I bought a cheap drone and I tell you what, man, when this thing gets sideways, it falls. You know what I mean? This yeah. thing was spinning on like 20 different directions how how was it in maintaining a height and a consistent speed? If anything, it seemed like it slowed down for me to record it, which is weird because if you look at it in the video, it just doesn't move very much. But this thing traversed Springfield in about three minutes. My video just doesn't, you know, give that justice. So I just, if it's a drone, how? And prove it. Like, show me the drone. Who's got this technology? Because if, if that's a drone tech, that's new, you know, that's yeah. not on the market. If it's a drone, it's a high classified secret government drone or an alien drone, maybe, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to rule out drone, but probably right. not one of ours. <clears throat> well, we've heard 
from the skeptics. We've heard from uh, a few airports now. We've heard from even another news station. Um, what do you think it is? Every ounce of me wants to say it's aliens, you know, because obviously I believe in that kind of stuff, especially after all the amazing stuff I've seen online and mm -hmm. just the different documentaries and the countless government agents and witnesses and pilots and stuff coming out and saying they're all seeing this stuff and just the attitude of the government here lately. But like kind of interlinking this as, as more and more of these people have contacted me and they're like, Hey, I've seen this and I've seen this. And like, literally just uh, like three days ago, I found another one um, about three or four weeks after mine, somebody caught this thing on camera up in St. Joe, Missouri, St. Um, St. Joseph, oh, which nice. is about, a, it's about a hundred miles away from Whiteman's air force base. And then unfortunately I got a little bit of a bad story with it. So mo some people, I just recently found out that a aerospace engineering company, um, Northrop Gunman, Grunman, they are a uh, military kind of contractor. They work on like stuff like that and they work out of Springfield airport. Okay. Um, they're kind of making the news right now because they might've gave a whole bunch of people cancer out there me being one of them because i really? lived out there and a few years ago i survived cancer yeah oh wow that sucks so and they might have caused that but in another thing they work over there um i've had multiple people living in that area that are telling me they're seeing stuff almost, almost like every other week some people are seeing stuff nightly flying around out by the airport wow like, i've gotten pictures and shared them on my site and stuff of like color changing objects like one of the first people to reach out to me after I shared my video was a lady that lives out there. And she's like, Hey, I see, I swear to God, I've seen that object and it comes out here almost all the time. Well, really? makes me a little bit curious, military contractor developing that kind of stuff in that area, frequent sightings. And then a lot of these sightings, some of me and the investigators I've talked to have found that are coming in are like up and down I-44. You know what no I mean? So way. Like, mm, like is it is someone testing something? Like, if, if if it is government, like it's a tech that they haven't released to the public yet, but who knows what they really have? And that doesn't rule out that aliens still aren't a thing, because obviously you have to get this technology from somewhere. You know, if they're inventing it, or I don't know, just it's defies what we know about airplanes and stuff at this point in time. You know, and flight. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's I, I lean government or alien. That's what I get out of it. Or angels or something. If somebody can prove that, whatever. You know, I'm not really. I did. Out. What it most reminded me of was um, <laughs> in the anime Neon Genesis Evangelion. Um, one of the yeah. angels is you know cube shaped, mm -hmm. um, and he's just this huge uh, sort of prism that just flies through the air. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of um footage and pictures i did want to ask you if there are any other uip or ufo incidents that really stick out to you just for your own personal interest but before going to that um is there anything else you want to say about the springfield cube something that's bothered me about this since day one is like okay so this thing got like attention of like some radio stations such as like 101 there was another one called Newsbreak. They're a radio station out of Illinois. They were one of the first first ones to kind of mention it. Yeah. Like it got coast to coast. Like it's gotten some YouTubers to talk about it. Some newspapers like overseas out of the UK. They really, this subject's really exploding over there and it's become like mainstream popular. So they're really talking about this stuff. But dude, I swear to God, there's a hush order on it here locally. No, my family, nobody I know around here has seen it anywhere locally through like KY3, Color 10, any of our local news affiliates. They just won't acknowledge this thing. And it really right, drives that point home. Like, why? You know, you see yeah. like what you'll on YouTube, they go viral and stuff like weather segments of like, oh, look what somebody recorded in our local sky, you know, isn't this interesting? What do you guys think? And they'll like banter about it and stuff, but nobody here. I got one weather guy to respond to me. And uh, I forget which one, but he finally messaged me back like weeks later, just randomly. And he's like, man, he's like, there's no telling. He's like, with everything the government's got now, it's probably something like that. And that's all I got out of any of them. No wow. one else will acknowledge this thing. Like, you know, it had to spark somebody's curiosity. And like I said, this thing kind of flew right at Hammond's Tower and it flew over Springfield and Rush Hour. Yeah. Nobody publicly, it's gotten like 12,000 views now on YouTube, thousands of Reddit and, and Facebook. 
a, a kind of irony a kind of irony of what's going on right now too is you and I live in the same city and I didn't encounter this through any news Local source channel. or any anything online I found it through um the Twitter account Alien Gray who mm -hmm. who shares videos that either he finds or are are sent to him and um that's just kind of ironic like you and I get like I I found this through a stranger and you and I live in the same city. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I, that's funny. The same thing. Like I had no idea you guys kind of did this show until somebody like linked it to me like, Hey, someone locally does is like talking about your video. And I got on and watched you and your partner talk about it. And I thought it was hilarious how she said like, like after she saw it, she went out into the yard and was like looking at the sky and it yeah. finally, like this video affected her like that. Like it, and it's just funny because she said that. Cause I was like, cause so many other people, my family did the same thing. Like when my brothers saw it, they went outside and they were like, <laughs> you know, any other time they wouldn't have believed it. Cause most of the people in my family are skeptics of this subject. Like, ah, whatever. We've never seen it. You know, you got to see it to believe it kind of deal. You can see yeah. all the stuff online you want, but until somebody, you know, that you kind of trust because my family knows I'm not going to BS them about something like this. Right. You know, I, it's too easy to get burned being a hoaxer these days. People are going to expose you. So yeah. I have no interest never wanting to fake anything and get torched <laughs> online. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, well, dude, um, when I, when I saw your video, I went home later that day and I went out on my back steps and I was just looking at the sky and I thought I saw something and I <laughs> ran down my alley. Um, yeah, no, it's it's a really cool video, and I'm glad that we encountered it. It it, it was it was just so cool to see, and it was so funny knowing it was on Glenstone Avenue, a, a road I drive on almost every day in my life. You know, <laughs> another joke with it is over an abandoned strip club too. Yes, it's very they Springfield. Were, <laughs> they were here looking for nudes. Hey guys, if you've made it this far in the video, I first just want to say thank you uh, for listening to Justin and I's conversation. It was a lot of fun to record, uh, and there's actually even more of it. So this first part I wanted to keep exclusively about the Springfield UAP incident for anyone interested in that event, as well as Justin's additional thoughts about that day and everything he saw. However, I will be uploading the full interview very soon. So if that interests you, please like this video and hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss it when I do upload it. I think you'll have a lot of fun hearing some of the other topics that Justin and I got into, as well as some of our general thoughts about aliens and government secrecy and government programs and all of those sorts of fun things. So once again, please consider liking this video and hitting the subscribe button if you don't want to miss all future content from the Secret Knowledge YouTube channel. Thank you so much, guys, and I hope to see you soon.